So my name is Einar Björgo. It's really a pleasure to be here. I work for UNOSAT in Geneva, which is the United Nations Institute for Training and Research and its Operational Satellite Applications Program. Many of the talks here um, today have so far focused on, on specific projects. I think this presentation will be a little bit more general as to how the UN uses satellite imagery uh, for natural disasters as well as for complex emergencies. Why are satellite images so useful? Of course, we are totally um, converted and we are totally uh, in love with this technology. But we have sometimes a rough time to con uh, convince our uh, senior managers. They don't always get it. Now they're starting to. Because satellite images provides you with objective information. It's a picture. If anyone wants to double check an analysis, they can do it. We use open uh, data. So for the, uh, um, for the uh, timely delivery of, of uh, satellite images, that's another element that is now excellent in terms of, of natural disasters and complex emergencies. This, um, this information is being used for the, by the high-level political leaderships for uh, reporting, for uh, negotiations, etc. So what's important here is that to not only focus on the immediate crisis and the response phase, but to stay in the post-disaster and even into the pre-disaster phase, because we can reuse information. What you see in the crisis, there's a high demand for basic uh, geographic information. This is collected by, by the satellites. We can use it, reuse it later on for, for uh, development issues as well. We use only open source um, uh, information, meaning commercial and scientific satellites, but the full range from the very uh, high resolution to larger area, lower resolution, optical and radar. Um, there are still limitations, of course, with the, with the cloud cover repeat frequency, but things are getting much, much better. So, uh, since 2003, when we first started this, we have been doing 173 what we call activations, so 173 disasters. Most of them are natural disasters. Um, this um, pie chart shows you clearly uh, our, our um, work in floods, in earthquakes, fires, storms, etc. Uh, and a little bit in complex emergencies from 2003 to 2007. Now, this picture has changed over the last two years. We now do roughly one quarter of uh, complex emergencies. Floods and natural disasters are still very much, uh, um, we are much engaged with, but the complex emergencies are really uh, taking much more of our time, and they are more um, time-consuming, let's say, to work with. So the information is not necessarily for a director, a nice poster uh, in his office. It's really to be used in the field. So maps, are regional maps, um, statistic information derived from the satellites, um, detailed information on, on uh, complex emergencies, on bridges that are down, on roads that are, are destroyed, uh, green houses, greenhouses that are destroyed. This is all being collected, it's being mapped, it's being analyzed. We write reports, situation reports, etc. Uh, here you can see the UN building uh, in, in Gaza building af uh, burning after it was hit. We, um, we can aggregate statistical uh, data so that we have, uh, by administrative unit, uh, clear uh, information, which is also being used in, uh, in uh, finding out the, the uh, uh, funding needed to, to get back on track. We sometimes come across very interesting features, um, but um, the timely uh, aspect of imagery is important. So when you see uh, one month apart here, in, uh, this is Sri Lanka, um, so now here's a little time event showing what happened in the so-called uh, no-fire zone um, over um, a period of a couple of weeks. Uh, we were able to monitor this. Uh, we saw uh, craters popping up. We saw larger craters, uh, houses being bom bombed and, and blown up, all at the same time where the, when the government claimed that there was no such thing going on. The, uh, we could use the images to estimate the number of shelters, hence the number of people. We could monitor when, unfortunately, some of the camps were flooded. Um, and now they are moved into the Manic um, farm area, which is a very structured uh, type of, of camps. Images can also be used in other cases. This is a case where we actually see refugees crossing a border from Chad into Cameroon. And we could use this snapshot in time to have a rough estimate of how many people were crossing the border following the fighting. We are now working on integrating um, GPS-coded photos into our work, um, also through satellite communications, so that we can have uh, verifications of our work and also to be able to spread quickly in near real-time information from the field, for example, for during earthquake assessments. 
We obviously we share the maps that are mostly publicly available, but also we share with practitioners our geodatabases, um, you know, uh, vector files, etc., and also uh, with the research community. But it has to be in a best effort because we are quite busy doing the operations. So the only thing I wanted to to make sure that you remember of this presentation is satellite images are objective, they are timely, and um, if you would like more information, please uh, let me know. Um, I hope this uh, was exactly five minutes because I timed it like that. Um, so it was very quick, but um, please see me later on. I think there are many great presentations here. I'm really impressed. I would like to hook up and, and see how uh, much of the, the interesting work going on here can be also used by the UN Institute for Training and Research and the people we work with. So thanks again for being invited. Thank you.